What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got round two from the Sealed Vault Tour over in Poland. Now, usual rules apply with it being a Sealed Vault Tour. I do not have the deck list. But, yeah, we'll have to make do, won't we, ladies and gentlemen? We'll have to make do. Now, what we've got is on the left, we have got Bartosz Ziemba playing Graham Bexworth's Hooligan. And on the right, we have got Camillo Carvajal playing Soto Dreadmire's Dagger. Oh, very, um, very dramatic name there on the right. But, uh, you know, I didn't have Decklist when I commentated over in Bristol. No, not Bristol, Birmingham. And that went okay, so I'm checking just to see if either of these players have actually registered their decks. You know, you never know, but alas, they have not. Shout out to the lovely folks from Crazy Killing Machine who are hosting this stream this weekend, letting me commentate. Good dudes from the UK running around doing these streams for us all to watch. They are wonderful people. Make sure you give them a follow on Twitch. Make sure you subscribe to them over on YouTube. They are basically going out of their way to travel to these tournaments to stream them just because they're awesome. So, as I've always said, anyone that's helping to grow the game, anyone that's helping to further a game that you love, make sure you chuck them a bit of love because they deserve it, frankly. You know, Steve and Carl, really good dudes. I met them at the Birmingham Vault Tour. Very nice people. Got on with them both immediately. And to be fair, I met them over burgers. So, you know, it was a good start. But no, lovely dude. So chuck a bit of love their way, ladies and gentlemen. Chuck a bit of love their way. So, looks like we're going to be starting off in the very near future. Now, it looks like... Has he got the extra card? I must have mulliganed. Okay. So we do see a Yancey Gang hitting the field here, which, I mean, Yancey Gang's all right when he's got an action to steal an amber. Oh, speaking of Yancey Gang, there's another Yancey Gang and a little niff coming down from Graham's side. So it is very much a Yancey Gang party rolling on at the moment. Little Niff has got Omega Deploy and Elusive. And after a neighbor of Little Niff is used to fight, you steal an amber. Which, of course, is weird because Yancey Gang can already steal an amber by fighting. All right. Doesn't matter because Camillo has just taken that out. Got himself an amber bonus in the process. Drops down a Gub. And then drops himself down another creature. So Gub is not on a flank. And ergo, it means that he can... um you know, get the plus six power. Now, that is a blood shard imp. After a creature reaps, its controller must sacrifice it. Now, it's only two power and there's no elusive. So, it's easily taken out, but you kind of have to. Oh, here we go. Full moon's come down. So, down comes an amber spine. Mogrel gets an amber. Because you get an amber every time you play a creature now. Amber spine, Mogrel. We saw this in the previous round. When your opponent reaps... You gain an amber too. Oh, okay. So we're taking down. So the blood shard imp went down. And Gub didn't go down. But then Gub ended up on a flank. Which then took him down. Now we see a persistence hunting coming down. And okay. So when you see a full moon coming down. You're always thinking right. This is going to be a big turn. Lots of creatures, lots of amber. Didn't work out that way, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. Quite a muted turn in terms of amber, certainly compared to what we've seen in the past. But hey-ho. Persistence hunting. You choose a house and exhaust each creature of the chosen house. Obviously, Bartos went for shadows and exhausted the only creature on the board. Um... The card we've seen last turn, we saw it in the last game as well, they're everywhere. Deal two damage to another enemy flank creature and one damage to each enemy creature not on a flank. So Ronnie Wristclots comes down then, steals an amber. And then we see a Nerve Blast coming down, stealing an amber, dealing a couple of damage. So Shadow's doing what Shadow's does, stealing some amber here. And that's kind of cool. Now we see Throwing Stars come down, which is going to take out the Amber Spine Mongrel, as well as... Doing a damage to the Yancey gang. And now, Camillo's sitting there with four amber and Bartos only has the one at the moment. And there really isn't much of a board presence for either player. 
Uh, there are three creatures down. <laughs> I love the two of them, a Yancey gang. So Ganges comes down, whistling darts, gives you an amber and does one damage to each of your opponent's creatures. As opposed to throwing stars, which does one to each, but you gain an amber if... Oh, ho, ho. now we're rolling. So now we've got a nerve blast, steal an amber, do a couple of damage. Down goes Yancey gang. And we are properly rolling here, ladies and gentlemen. We are properly rolling. Okay. As always, the chat is on, so, you know, do get involved. Tell me what you think about this game. As it stands, we've had a, a weird kind of start where people just keep stealing each other's amber. <laughs> Camillo stole all of... Um, Bartos is up for last turn, and now Bartos has stolen all of Camillo's this turn. This is what happens sometimes when you get two Shadows decks against each other. We've actually, they've both got Shadows, they've both got Dis. The only difference is that Bartos has Untamed, whereas Camillo's sitting there with a bit of the old Brobnar. But, oh, no, okay. So, we got a couple of Brobnar creatures down there, including a Groggins. That's going to help. Don't do very much at the moment, but hopefully they will in the not-too-distant future. And that's it, it seems. That, that's, that's the turn. Huh. Okay. Well, if that's all you wanted to do, ladies and gentlemen. The other creature there is a Grok when you fight your opponent loses an Amber. It's got five power, but we're going to have to wait a turn or two to, to really see it coming in. Well, until Camillo goes for Brobnar again, I suppose. Shout out also to the hand cams. I mean, you can see that Camillo's got a Brobnar turn brewing next turn. A real good Brobnar turn going. So, Library of the Damned comes down. Okay, and a Banish comes down. Get rid of a creature. He's not showing us his hand very well, unfortunately. Uh, Shula comes down, but it only, Shula only steals Amber if your opponent has four or more. So that's not going to steal any now. And Bartos, he passes with six Amber. Now, it's annoying that the Grok went away. Because the Grok would be able to get rid of one Amber from Bartos. He'd be down to five. He wouldn't be forging a key. If we look at Camillo's board, he's got a Groggins on the board. He's got four. Four of his six cards in hand are Brobnar. If he goes Shadows or Dis, he's playing one card and that's it. That's all he gets to do. But can he get rid of an Amber from Bartos playing Brobnar? So, okay, that's going to help. He plays a Tremor, which is going to stun a couple of creatures. Which is going to help. Flamethrower, incidentally, was the, um, was the artifact that went down. But can he get rid of an Amber? Now, he's gone into the fray. Which, every time you fight, you're ready. So, takes out the Gamgees, and then takes out the Yancey gang, but goes away himself, unfortunately. So, he's cleared the board there, but does he, he doesn't know he's got rid of any way to get rid of Amber. So, Bartos will just be forging his first key. That Oh, he had two into the fray in hand at the same time. That's less effective, shall we say. They're just running through, just making sure it was all, all correct. Okay. So we are all correct now. We are all rolling. Just checking Into the Fray. Into the Fray is... It's, it's a great card. I like it very much indeed. It's not... You know, when you fight, you're ready. You don't then have to fight again, but if you fight, you then get readied. Which is kind of cool. Remember, you've got to survive the fight in order to do so. It kind of, kind of acts as a pseudo board wipe there with Groggins. So, we've not got much of anything down on the board for either player. But Bartos has just forged his first key. And Camillo's sitting there with two Amber. It's not just that Camillo hasn't forged a key yet. It's that Camillo isn't particularly close to forging a key. It's not like he's going to forge a key next turn. I mean, he's definitely not going to forge a key next turn. Not unless some weird combination of cards gives him a bunch of Amber. So, Bumblebird goes down there. And then... He plays an Exhume. So that was playing a um, Yerk. There we go. And okay. Gets an Exhume. And remember, Exhume allows you to play the creature as if it were in the active house. 
That is to say that he can play the little Nif as a Shadows creature, even though it's a diss term. So, doesn't really get much amber there, other than the Exhume. But does build up his board a bit, although straight away, Banish is taking that out. Then we've got more... Oh, that was a very fast turn there. That was an extremely fast turn. <laughs> eh, whatever makes him happy, I suppose. Whatever floats your boat. But we still don't have much being built up here. You know, it's been, it's been quite quite slow. The spider came down there. It gains poison when attacking a flank creature. It's got skirmish, so it takes no damage back. It's going to be all right for fighting, but it, it's not going to get him much closer to winning the game. Is that a Song of Spring? I want to say that is a Song of Spring. It worries me sometimes how good I am at identifying these cards on stream. Eh, for what I want to do, I suppose it's useful. Song of Spring gives you an amber bonus, and when you play, you shuffle any number of friendly untamed creatures from your hand, discard pile, or battle line back into your deck. Although the amber bonus is it's kind of handy as well. Okay, so now he plays Soldiers to Flowers. I like what he's doing here. Soldiers to Flowers makes you shuffle all of your untamed creatures back into your deck. And... Sorry, no. Let me try that again. Makes you purge them... And then for each one purge, you gain an amber. So by playing Song of Spring first, it basically meant that what he could do was save any creatures he wanted to save and then only purge the ones he wanted to purge. So that was a really good sequence of a couple of cards there. Saving the creatures he wanted to save and purging the ones that he didn't. And he's cheekily gone up to four amber here. It's... You know, he's he just, you know, played Soldiers to Flowers, that got him an Amber, and he got rid of his Bumblebird, and that got him an Amber. And he's just slowly rocking along here. So we see a Streak and a Tesmal, both very good, very disruptive creatures coming down from Camillo here. Uses Spider to take out the Grove Keeper before he can add too much power onto the Yerk. And that's it. And I think the problem with Camillo here is that he's not... I don't necessarily think it's his fault with the cards that he's had... But he's not really getting himself any closer to winning. His turns are like, ah, oh, play a creature, get rid of one of your creatures. But he's not, after the, at least not after the first turn or two, he's not getting rid of his opponent's amber. He's not stopping and forging a key. He's not getting himself closer to forging a key. He's, and I've seen a million games like this. You can play with a battle line all you like. The way you win in Key Forge is getting more amber and getting amber away from your opponent. And at the moment, Bartos' deck is doing that just better. Plays a shadow of this. Basically makes all of the all the boxes blank for his opponent next turn. Gets himself another amber. Oh, and that doesn't even matter that we did get the amber from it. Because he plays an unlocked gateway. Now that will end his turn. But it will also end both players' battle line. It destroys every creature on the board. Okay, now, what was I saying about needing to get the Amber? Camillo there just plays a Swindle. Steals free Amber. We saw this in the previous game. You get free of your opponent's Amber, but that's your turn. That's your entire turn. So, it's now going to be interesting to see what, what, what Graham's got. You know, gets himself another Amber, which is nice. Plays the lights out for no effect, but gets another Amber, which is nice. Plays a Ronnie Wrist Clocks, which will steal one Amber, and then a little Niff. Okay. And even though he played Swindle, Camillo's now sitting there. He's not forging a key this turn. And Bartos is sitting there on check. And Bartos was able to build up a little bit of a battle line. I say that, Nerve Blast takes out Little Niff, steals an Amber right back. Now Camillo's on check, and Graham isn't. I'm having flashbacks to the first couple turns of this game, where it's just a back and forth. No, you can't forge, I'm going to forge. Well, you can't forge, I'm going to forge. Uh, actually, mate, and it's just flicking back and forth between who's actually allowed to forge and who isn't. It's kind of cool in a way. Kind of cool in a way. Okay. So, Glimmer comes down. Glimmer is an alpha card. It's got to be the first thing you do, other than forging a key, on your turn. And it lets you grab any card you like 
from your discard pile and put it straight back into your hand. I was thinking full moon. It depends how many creatures he's got. If he's got at least two creatures in hand, this was a phenomenal play. Otherwise, it's fine. So, plays the Amber Spine Mongrel, grabs himself an Amber. Oh, he's got Chota Hasri. Oh. Okay. Okay, he. Okay, because of the full moon. There we go. I thought it was a turn too early, but he's not. Now, that's a key cheat. He gains an Amber from the full moon for playing Chota Hasri. And then immediately. Loses an amber and forges at current cost, which is six. So that worked out perfectly. Plays a Grasping Vines for an amber. Plays a Song of Spring and gets rid of his opponent's artifact. Plays a Song of Spring for an amber. And well, the funny thing is here, he's not even going to be stopping Camillo for forging a key. He's just going, you know what, Camillo, forge a key. Because I've got two artifacts to your zero. I've got four creatures to your zero. I've got two keys to your one. I've got two amber to your zero. I've got a better battle line. I've got more artifacts. I've got more keys. I feel like this game is so in hand. I'm just going to let you forge a key. And it might work. <laughs> it might actually work. Now, plays a flamethrower down again. Oh, he didn't see the customs office. We've seen a couple times, and this does happen in sealed tournaments. Customs office, your opponent must pay you an amber to use an artifact. Oh, which then, of course, leads to the question. If your opponent has no amber, can they play the artifact? Yes, I believe that's the question going on here. It doesn't say when your opponent plays. If it said steal an amber, then you can't steal. It's fine. But it reads, your opponent must pay you an amber in order to play the artifact. I would assume he's not allowed to play it. And that does seem to be what they're ruling. And I think that's got to be the correct decision here. Because it doesn't say when... If it said when your opponent plays an artifact, they give you an amber. It says they must pay you an amber. So we are sounding some horns looking for a creature. We see the drummer naught here. Now, he does have an amber. So now Camillo would potentially be able to play the flamethrower if he really wanted to. He does get the Groke down and he does get the Bingo Bang Bang down. Does he want to play the flamethrower? Oh, playing a drummer naught so he can get Groke down on the different place. I think he was just, you have to do it. <laughs> so he's just playing it back down again. So it's going all right. But Camillo just seems too far behind. You know, he's ended his turn. He's got a decent Brobnar battle line now. With them all being the same house, it does mean he can start reaping. But one of the things I've learned in Keyforge is, if you're ahead in the game, and then you've got a big battle line and you can just sit there and start reaping, great. If you're behind in the game, it just doesn't work as well. And that's a problem. It's a real problem. So, I mean, he might... He might just be too far behind at this stage. I hope not. Because it would make a much more fun game if he didn't just run till the end. But... Okay, so Hysteria comes down, returns each creature to the player's hand. And that's what I mean about, you know, it, if you're ahead in the game, that doesn't worry you too much. But that was Camillo's way back. Camillo was basically just sitting there going, right, I've got four Brobnar creatures. This is my way back. Big Brobnar turns. But no, it doesn't work anymore because you don't have any Brobnar creatures anymore. You don't have any creatures. You've got nothing on your battle line. And now it looks like we're just seeing we're just seeing Bartles here, just just trying to figure out. He's got a Nefru down. Each time a creature is destroyed, its owner gains an amber. Which is gonna put Camillo off of <laughs> destroying his creatures for the time being. But you sit here and you look at the board and you start to think, how does Camillo get back into it? Now He's got a couple more creatures. He's got the Groke. And he's plays down a Drummonaut to pick up the Groke and play it back down again. And he's got a War Grumpus. And he's got a Bingle Bang Bang. But it's just... You know, now he's also got... Is that a Gargantes Scrapper in hand? 
But that seems to be the only other Brobnar creature he's got in hand. So, yes, it is Garganti Scrapper. When you play, if you have free amber or more, you deal free damage to an enemy creature, which, which he doesn't. Now, his opponent isn't going to forge a key yet, but Bartos is in a great position. He can just chill. Honestly. He can just sit there and chill. <laughs> Because he's just not under any real pressure. So now we see Garganti Scrapper. Wait, Garganti Scrapper's an alpha. I must be seeing that wrong. That must not be Garganti Scrapper. That must be a different creature. Because it's, it's a Brobnar creature with deploy. So... Oh, Persistence Hunting exhausts all five of those creatures. And Amber Spine Mongrel comes down. That is, that is big, ladies and gentlemen. That was very big. We've now got Chota Hazri. And now, now remember, he can he'd only forge a key if you've got enough Amber. He does not have enough Amber. So we're all right for the minute. Trying to, I'm trying to figure out what that Brobnar... I'm sure that's a Garganti Scrapper. And Garganti Scrapper shouldn't be going down in the middle of the battle line. And it's got Alpha. So Perplexing Sophistry comes down. So I don't know how, how he played that on his last turn. Unless I'm missing something. If I'm missing something about Garganti Scrapper, let me know in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know in the chat. Hey ho, let's not talk about that anymore. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. So, Bartos here. He's got himself a decent battle line. Now, Perplexing Sophistry has gone and got him an Amber. There's lots of shuffling going on. Still shuffling his hand. Because, of course, he is discarding a random card from the hand if you've got more amber than your opponent they discard a random card from the hand and you draw one and he is sitting at three amber to one so this will very much work but everything's just exhausted all the time i mean that that i'm not even kidding that persistence hunting last turn was huge he could literally have just reaped for five amber with brobnar and bartos had a couple slow turns in a row at this stage bartos he got himself off to a big lead but now he's got the worst battle line and now he's not about to see his opponent forge a second key soon but he does need to get rolling kind of sooner rather than later he doesn't want to, because we saw in the last game a fairly big comeback back in round one. If you're watching on YouTube, the previous rounds will always be linked in the description of the video. So just go and check that one out. But as it stands, it's just a little bit, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so, does get down a Ronnie, so he gets to steal an Amber. And Nerve Blast is going to steal an Amber and get rid of the Bingle Bang Bang. So, okay, is there any way he can get himself another couple of Amber? Now, there are no Shadows creatures out with which he can reap. Looks like the only one he's got is Little Niff. So he does play down the Little Niff, which is nice. And remember, Little Niff... Gives, you know, his neighbours the ability to steal. It's going to help. When they're fighting, anyway. And, of course, it is an Omega card, so it will end his turn. So, I like Graham's position here. He's got three Shadows creatures, three Untamed creatures. He needs two more Amber to forge his third and final key. Though he is playing against a deck with Shadows, which will be trying to slow him down and or stop him. Probably stop him if I'm honest. <laughs> but it seems like the seems like the game has kind of slowed down quite considerably from the early turns. Now it's over to Camillo. Now what he could do here is just reap four times with Brobnar, 
but it looks like he's only got one Brovnar card in hand, and it doesn't have an Amber bonus, so he'd be ending his turn once again not on check. Now, the good news is he does have four discards in hand, but I don't know if any of them have got Amber bonuses, and there's no disc creatures on board to use. Camillo seems to have a nice deck for a lot of things, using Into the Fray on Groke here, but it doesn't seem like he's generating much Amber. So he's fighting Nefru, and then his opponent loses an Amber. And now they're asking, wait, so does your opponent get an Amber when Nefru is destroyed? The answer is no, because Nefru is not there to give the Amber when it's destroyed. When a creature is destroyed, its owner gains an Amber, but unfortunately Nefru is destroyed, and then you go, oh, Nefri's, oh wait, no, Nefri's not there anymore. Boo, etc. So, he's at least getting Amber away from his opponent. He can fight again. Oh, cheeky. What he's actually doing there is he's fighting into elusive creatures. So, he's breaking the elusive without taking any damage, but still making his opponent lose an Amber for the fight ability. <laughs> That's very clever. I like that a lot. So, Garganti Scrapper. No. Now, remember, Reaping here with the Amber Spine Mongrel isn't an option. You need to take out the Amber Spine Mongrel first. I assume he's broken the Elusive. You'd like to think he's broken the elusive at this stage. If he hasn't, things are going wrong. Because, there we go. Oh, no, he's actually taking out Lamindra. Ah, because, of course, Lamindra's got taunt. But, unfortunately, still takes it down. Well, yeah, so, couldn't take out the Mongrel. So, now, and look, he's still on a Brobnar turn. He can still take out the Amber Spine Mongrel. Problem is Hazardous Free. So down goes the little Niff. Remember the Elusive was previously broken. He needs Amber. And he can't reap without giving his opponent Amber. So he needs to take out the Amber Spine Mongrel. Got to be the play here. He's got to get rid of it. So Drummonaut comes in, takes out Ronnie Wrist Clocks. And this is why it's such a good, well-designed, powerful card. Because it's got Hazardous Free. So essentially, you hit into it, you take free damage, you then fight it and take free, and then you're destroyed. Okay, so Drummonaut now does go into the Amberspine Mongrel, finally takes it out. But once again, Camillo, and we've seen this for the entire game so far, Camillo has been really good and effective at clearing battle lines, at taking out creatures, at slowing his opponent's progress. What he has not been able to do is actually gain a whole bunch of Amber. And that's a problem. Huge problem. So. Getting a bit more amber. I mean, really, it's, it's just over to, to Bartos to close out the game now. Carmelo's got one forged key and one amber. He doesn't seem to, to have a deck that's particularly good at racing for amber. It's great at controlling the board, and it's got a bit of stealing and stuff. Down comes an exhume, get a creature back. But it's just not working well enough. Now, he does get the little niff back. Oh, and this is nice, because now... Yes. Okay. I like this. So now both the creatures either side have now got the ability, you know, they, they can action to steal an amber, which I, I very, very much like.
but still passing the turn. He's got four amber. Neither player seems to want to finish out this game. Lights out, comes down, gets an amber. Returns a couple creatures to his opponent's hand. But it's not... Yeah. <laughs> of course, one of the ones he sent back was Scully. And when you play it, you have to sacrifice a friendly creature. Uh, you don't really want to be playing that down constantly if you can at all help it. <laughs> So, what can Camillo do here? Now, he's got a hand with five discards. He's got no discs on the board, but he's got five discards. Now, it looks like he's got, a, I want to say, a silver key imp there. Which isn't going to do much. His opponent's already forced his second key, but hey-ho. Leaves just another creature down. Bartos here is just working it out. He's putting his cards down and going, right, how, how can I work this? What can I do to make sure I do this in the right order? So down goes Ganges. And then we see Reaping and Ronnie Risk Locks. And Little Nif goes down in the middle of them. Ends his turn with six Amber. Oh, does Camillo have any way of getting rid of his Amber? I'm not sure that he does. There's nothing on board that can do it. And he's got a bunch of discs in his hand. And now the shadows in his hand is a Merkins, which just plays the top card of your opponent's deck as if it were yours. Maybe he can get into something with that. But I'm not sure Camillo's got any way to stop Graham for uh, Bartos forging his third key. Yeah, he has. He's actually gone Merkins. It's his only option. This is his one. He's got this and Ronnie Risk Clocks to use. That is it. Now, he can also go random card in the archives instead. It is an unlocked gateway, which ends his turn and ends the game. Because now, Bartos just forges his third key, and that is the win. That is not what you want to hit off a of Merkins. You get a random card from your opponent's archive. You play it. It's got Omega. It ends the game immediately. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. Congratulations to Bartos. A good deck. Slowed down a bit in the middle, but got it at the end. Camillo, a fun deck to be sure. Very good at controlling the board. But throughout the game, he never really seemed to have the amber that he needed to take stuff home. And that really did seem to be the difference in the game in the end. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you're on the YouTube, this is the end of the round. So comment, like, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at the Wossy. Look after yourselves. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.